be the Holy Trinity, one God, who shapes the whole creation, who comes with might and mercy, who fills the hungry with good things. Amen. Let us approach the throne of grace with repentant hearts. Faithful God, we confess that we have been unfaithful to you. Like dry leaves and withered grass, our lives are blown about by our sins and the powers of evil around us. Restore us, O God. Let the light of your face shine on us, and we shall be saved. Amen. God is patient, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you this good news. You are free from all that imprisons you. Your sins are forgiven. God heals your broken hearts. Live in peace and harmony as you wait for the day of God. Amen.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, ruler of the universe. John the Baptist calls all people to prepare the Lord's way, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Bless us as we light the candles on this wreath. Baptize us with the fire of your spirit, that we may be a light shining in the darkness, welcoming others as Christ has welcomed us. For he is our light and our salvation. Blessed be God forever. Amen. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, give to all the people of the world knowledge of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God announces a covenant with Israel, a messenger like Malachi. His name means my messenger will prepare the way for the coming of the Lord by purifying and refining God's people as silver and gold are refined. The first reading comes from Malachi chapter 6, chapter 3, beginning at the first verse. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? He, for he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness." Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old, and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Apostle Paul was the pastor of many new churches. He writes in this letter about his joy to be in partnership with the Christians of Philippi. Listen to how tender-hearted Paul, sometimes a stern preacher, is with his friends as he encourages them to grow in love and knowledge. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, beginning at the ninth verse. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you, because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think this way about all of you, because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight, 
to help you to determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Etruria and Trachonitis, and Licentius ruler of Abilene, during the priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. On your mark, get set. And go! Have a great day! These were my final words to Freddie as I dropped him off at school one day. The drop-off line can be a little long, and I like to help keep things moving. And so I want Freddie to be prepared to get out of the car so we help keep things moving. But the thing is, no matter how much time I take to prepare him to get out of the car, it still seems to take forever. Freddy's response to my pause after get set was that he was not going to get out of the car until it stopped moving. He was not ready to jump in until he saw his chance and that it was his time to participate. And so we find ourselves in similar situations, don't we? If we are observing something happening, it can take forever. And this year, for a variety of reasons, we are slowly decorating the sanctuary. Rather than getting everything out all at once and be overwhelmed with the change, the decorations will be added piece by piece, week by week. Slowing down helps us to focus on the preparation. But we also look for places where we can jump in. One Sunday, we will decorate the tree after worship, or if there is some decoration you would love to help put up, uh, speak with me and you can help deck the halls. But we wait for the right moment to get involved. We don't want to overdo it or jump in too early and screw up the preparation. This week, we focus on John the Baptist, and Luke tells us when this is happening just as he gives us historical clues in the Christmas story. The 15th year of Tiberius, Pontius Pilate in Judea, Herod in Galilee, and so on and so forth. Basically, he's saying, in the year 30 of the Common Era, or 30 years after Jesus was born, the word of God came to John Zachariasen, that is, John the Baptist, son of Zechariah. This man of great pedigree, who is living in the wilderness, goes about the region preaching about God. His father predicted this at his birth. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. Now, you might ask yourself, 
Why did it take 30 years for John the Baptist to finally jump in and fulfill what his father had prophesied about him? For years, John lived in the wilderness, waiting, watching for his moment. And it probably felt like forever to him. And finally, the word of God came to him. It was time to make the final preparations. Fulfill the words of your father and follow in the footsteps of the prophet Isaiah. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. And the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. And all flesh shall see the salvation of God. John jumps right in, preaching, teaching, and baptizing. He challenges everything in the established world, from the political figures to the religious authorities. Even the foundations of the world will be changed, with the mountains lowered and the valleys raised. This will be a slow, gradual change in the world. And it all began with the coming of the Word of God. And so this morning, I remind you that the word of God has come to you as well. Now is the time for you to jump into God's story, to fulfill the promises made at your baptism and affirmed at your confirmation. You promise to proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. And we are invited by God, called to change the world, to do things differently, so that all flesh shall see the salvation of God. We may have been holding back because we do not want to jump in too early. We may have been holding back because things seem to take forever. Whatever our hesitation is from doing our part, now is the acceptable time. Now is the dawn of our salvation. We can join in the ministry of Jesus Christ, sharing the good news of what Jesus has done. We can overflow with God's love more and more. We can challenge the political rulers and the religious authorities, asking them to make decisions to benefit those most in need, lifting up the lowly and throwing down the mighty, working to make God's kingdom come here and now so we are prepared when he comes forever. Christmas is not only the celebration of Jesus Christ's birth, but it is also the celebration of God coming to be with his people. And we continually celebrate this event because we are waiting for the day when God will return to be with his people forever. And so we take the time of Advent to prepare, to prepare ourselves, to prepare our church, to prepare our world, for the coming kingdom of God. Let us prepare ourselves to jump in the ministry of Jesus Christ, not waiting for the perfect moment, but accepting where we are to prepare the way of the Lord, smoothing out the rough edges of our world, filling in the cracks with love. Love for ourselves, love for our neighbors, and love for our world. And we can participate in showing God's love to the world so that everyone can see the salvation of God. So they can see the love of God in Christ Jesus as the little baby in the manger or the man hanging on the cross. This way they come to know the depth of God's love for the world, the salvation God has come to offer. This is the work we are called to do right alongside John the Baptist. So on your mark, get set, and go. Amen.
season of watching and waiting, let us pray for all people and places that yearn for God's presence. You send messengers into the world to proclaim the day of your coming. Make our bishops, pastors, deacons, and lay preachers confident in their preaching, that their words and our lives witness to your grace. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your spirit to all living things that are endangered. Provide them with shelter and care, and bring us into right relationship with the earth that you create and call good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send leaders to our nations, cities, schools, and businesses to work on behalf of those who have lost parents, spouses, and loved ones, immigrants, the imprisoned, those living in poverty, and all who are oppressed. Make them bold in their commitments to justice and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your servants to care for those who suffer. Use our ministries and our lives to reach out with compassion to those who are hungry, oppressed, lonely, or ill, especially those we name aloud or in our hearts. Grant them healing and wholeness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send prophets to speak difficult truths, even when they are poorly received. Embolden those who ask hard questions and challenge accepted ways. Instill in youth and elders alike a passion for pointing to Jesus in all things. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We remember your saints, both those publicly celebrated and those more humbly remembered. Confident that your work will be completed, we live in faith until the day of your coming. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of new life, you come among us in the places we least expect. Receive these prayers and those of our hearts in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us give thanks for God's promise. Prepare the way of the Lord. Straighten our crooked paths, O God. The day of the Christ's coming draws near. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. Pray through us now, Holy Spirit. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ, word made flesh, making all things new. Blessed are you, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit, dissolving every chain of sin that binds us, rebuking every power that enslaves, purifying our hearts, challenging every action not moved by love, and setting all creation free. Blessed are you, Holy Spirit. We know the end that lies before us and all things. The elemental powers of this universe shall be burned away, the heavens vaporized, the earth and all our doings exposed for all to see. We know the end and we tremble. We know, we also know your promise, out of fire to recreate, out of chaos to reorder, out of such destruction to renew. We know your promise, and we rejoice. We rejoice, for you are with us, coming to us in flesh long ago, coming into this world through your church in the power of the Spirit, and coming again to complete what you have begun, that on that day when all things are recreated, and on these days as we wait for the fullness to come, the world may see and know in us the love that moves the universe to its true end in new beginning, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.